don't give up hope. There is tons you can do to, to totally turn around the future trajectory, whether you're an adult, whether you're a child. But I think the key is, you know, spending the time to get to understand what the root causes are and targeting those rather than just trying to suppress the symptoms eternally. First of all, what are primitive retained reflexes? What are they? So these are reflexes we all have. You know, when a baby's born, their brain's only about 20% developed. And that first year of life, we all do these little reflex movements. And they're there to create wiring in the brain to make things happen easy for us later on in life. Now, normally, they should have completed their process by a year of age. But sometimes they don't and they hang around past their cell by date. And they're like gremlins in the works. They mess everything up, your balance, your coordination, even your emotional responses to things. So they should leave us between sort of 12 months and two years. Exactly. How many of them approximately are there? Oh, there are a load of different reflexes. Right. So there are, you know, 10, 12 primitive reflexes. Yeah. And okay. then there are other reflexes. So they stick around. Yeah. Why do some people not lose them naturally? So there's a lot of research that's been done on this. And there are certain things that make it more likely that they'll stick around. So, for example, if there was a difficult birth process, um, C-section is increased probability. If you miss certain uh, neurodevelopmental milestones, if you didn't crawl, for example, there are genetic links. Um, there's a load of different stuff that can tie into making it more likely. So that's that's a we therefore are growing up from that age with an internal um, uh, confusion, a, a ball of confusion, literally yeah. a locked ball of confusion. Yeah. Which is why you, I presume, I've never had this that's conversation. It. That's you it. call your <laughs> clinic the Key Clinic because you can unlock it. We're unlocking it. Yeah. Okay. Now this can you can unlock things at any age, yeah. and so a lot of children that are brought to you come and see you and you you fix literally fix th their mums and dads often uh, is it genetic there is there are some genetic links right. to it yeah certainly with things like dyslexia and with adhd um yeah and we often end up treating the parents as well so some typical therapies just just give us a, a, a sense a taste of what they might be of what they are so for retained reflexes the way we get rid of them is we do this these very slow controlled what are called neurodevelopmental exercises little movements you have to do every day for sort of five, ten minutes every day over a period of time. And what you're doing is giving the body a second chance to develop. So you're re-stimulating until the reflex has had enough, then it throws in the towel and it's gone for good. You don't need to repeat it. And that's when you get those breakthroughs in functioning. So the more we find out about things that are preventative and free in the world, like sleep and yeah. breathing and hot and cold and exercise and things like that, the more people like me, because um, I'm an idiot, get frustrated that the rest of the world, A, doesn't know this, B, even from the people who don't know this, don't do anything about it. You must be that times a thousand, mustn't you? Because dyslexia is a, it's a massive issue. It's been talked about for years and years and years. Yeah. And this is at the heart of a lot of it. And, you know, regardless of how much sort of reading therapy you have and thousands of hours spent with beautiful, lovely, amazingly committed and dedicated yeah. people, this it's not an easy fix, but it is a real long lasting fix for dyslexia. Yeah. I mean, I think that was my frustration at the beginning. I was seeing all these labels, all these diagnoses being given out, but not a lot being done to figure out why, you know, why is the problem there and what can you actually do to target the root cause? So, you know, reflexes, that's just one part of it. Right. You know, with dyslexia and, and with a load of other things, how you hear has a massive impact on Can things. you take us into the next field then? Yeah, so so how you hear, um, very often people come to us and say, oh, I've had a hearing test, there's no problem. And what they mean is there's no deafness. But you might have, for example, through the roof hypersensitive hearing. And that means you're going to be distractible because you can't block out background noises. You're listening to the overhead light bulb or what's happening three classrooms away. So we can bring that within a sort of normal level. Um, hearing as well, again, with dyslexia, there's... A, a, a strange effect of the order of words coming into the brain and the higher brain has to work harder and harder to unscramble that mess. Again, we can sort that part out. And there are even hearing curves linked to depression that seem to be causative factors. So we work on all of that stuff as well. And so let, now let's introduce hyperactivity into the yeah. to the party. Mm. And so, you know, lots of kids are diagnosed, sometimes diagnosed, but they're observed to be hyperactive. That's because they have this massive frustration inside, yeah. which is like a, a, the wall of a dam with all this energy pushing against it and they don't know what to do with it. And the the dam is too strong to breach. And yeah. so where does it go? Yeah, and it's beyond conscious control. I think that's really important to say. So the work that we're doing there is really pioneering work. It's come out of somewhere called the Walsh Institute in the States. And this 
biochemist, 88 years old, spent his time analysing differences in biochemistry in those with hyperactivity and all sorts of different mental health problems. And he found a really interesting thing. He found 70 to 90 percent of those with ADHD just happen to have an imbalance in zinc to copper. OK, they don't have enough zinc. They've got too much copper. They don't produce enough dopamine and they overproduce that adrenaline and that noradrenaline that makes them hyper. So, yes, you can correct it by trying to sort of put a drug in and suppress it. But what we're doing is giving the body what the brain needs to flourish without having to do that. So, you know, and, and we treat different types. He found five completely different types of depression each one requiring a very distinct way of treating it. So, you know, that's, that's, I think it's the future of psychiatry and it's work we're trying to pioneer.